Hello and welcome back, your lovely faces, to another fun fact-finding video. Today we're going to be talking about Avatar, released in 2009, written and directed by James Cameron. Avatar 2 is out later this year, so let's jump on in to finding some 8 things you may or may not know about Avatar. Before that though, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, Star Chef 2. Star Chef 2 is a restaurant simulation and casual cooking game. You can build the restaurant of your dreams from a small, humble diner to a fine dining experience for all the customers. To give an example, you can turn the diner into a number of differently dressed restaurants. You can choose from cozy chairs to fine dining tables all at the click of a button. For decor, the kitchens, anything is possible. For myself, I love Asian cuisine and all that comes with it. The culture, the vibe, the presentation, that's why I always choose the Asian themed for my restaurants in this game. You can also cook a number of amazing menu items, from cheeseburgers, growing your own fruits and vegetables, to serving amazing pavlova to your customers. If staying in the same spot isn't your thing, you can travel the world looking for new and magical ingredients to make amazing items. So why not visit the North Pole at Christmas time or Hawaii in the summer? You can even compete and cook in live events with rewards and perks. You can also add your friends and make new ones where you compete against them in player versus player and you can even compete in tournaments. One of the great aspects of this game is that you can also learn from it. If you're looking for historical facts, nutrition or even just funny facts about items and the food, it's all in here for you to see. You can look up facts from Pavlova to glass noodles. So what are you waiting for? Come join myself and fellow chefs to a cook-off in Star Chef 2. If you can stand the heat, come into the kitchen. All links are available below for iOS and Android devices. This month saw the trailer release of the brand new James Cameron movie, Avatar, The Way of Water. Being released later this year in December, a staggering 13 years after the release of the first movie. The trailer doesn't give much away, apart from the fact that it looks incredible and will push the boundaries of CGI and 3D in movie theatres even further. So today, get your memories back into your Avatar bodies, we will be giving you 8 things you may or may not know about Avatar. 8. The movie was in the making since the 70s. Growing up in Canada, a young James Cameron knew he wanted to tell stories and was fascinated by space and life beneath the ocean. During his college years, he changed majors from physics to English, but dropped out a year into his class. He worked odd jobs from truck driving to being a janitor, to which he would write stories in his free time, Avatar being his very first story, but under a different name. This was also the time when he learned the craft of special effects. Along with writing stories, Cameron would read up on optical printing, front screen projection and dye transfers. Anything he could get his hands on, he read. It wasn't until 1977, when he saw the sci-fi epic of Star Wars, that he decided to quit his job as a truck driver and enter the film industry. Over the course of his career, he went back to Avatar, to which he knew he could never make the movie that he had in his mind, due to limitations. It wasn't until 1994, three years after his groundbreaking sci-fi masterpiece Terminator 2 Judgment Day, that he decided to write an 80-page treatment of Avatar. At that time, it would have cost a staggering $300 million plus, making it the most expensive movie of all time. However, the special effects were not up to the standard that Cameron envisioned, so the movie was put on hold while he directed a little movie you may have heard of. Titanic. 7. The 1960s Avatar Show Hoax In 2014, an article appeared on the internet, claiming that Avatar was in fact a reboot of a 1960s TV show which starred William Shatner. The article was spread across the internet like wildfire. People were seeing it and believing that this show was actually real. At that time, William Shatner was a well-known actor for his performances on Broadway and guest appearances on numerous high-profile TV shows like The Twilight Zone and The Outer Limits. He had still not been in Star Trek yet, as the Avatar TV show was actually supposedly made in 1963. 
The show was described as being a very basic sci-fi TV show. The Navi would have a problem and Jake Sully, Shatner's character, would solve it for them in his Avatar body. Reading through it now, it still makes me laugh like the first time I saw it. The author of the article pulled something off which is really tricky to do this day and age, and that is to dupe the internet. But out of the shots used, this is by far my favourite. Robbie the Robot from Lost in Space with a man in a spacesuit superimposed in the dome. The article even ends with a short paragraph saying that Avatar was even rebooted in the early 90s and failed. 6. The Navi language was created from scratch. Cameron knew he wanted the Navi characters to have their own language, with only a select few of them speaking English, due to being taught it by the humans. Cameron being Cameron, he enlisted the help of a linguist from the University of Southern California, Dr. Paul Frommer. Dr. Frommer created over 1,000 words, with some 30 words being created by Cameron himself. The language is primarily based on an Ethiopian Semitic language, with certain sounds coming from the Maori language. Dr. Frommer worked extensively with the actors who were to speak the language, giving them MP3 players with all the dialect on so they can always be learning. Cameron also wrote some songs for the movie to be sung in Navi, to which Dr. Frommer had to translate into a poetic form of Navi for them to sound natural. Since the movie opened over 13 years ago, people still email requests to Dr. Frommer asking him to expand the language, and there are also websites devoted to the study and use of this language. 5. Composer James Horner created brand new instruments for the score. The late James Horner has worked with Cameron on two occasions, Aliens and the mega-successful Titanic. At the time he was asked to compose Avatar for Cameron, he thought it would be straightforward. Boy was he wrong. For the movie score, Cameron wanted specific types of music to be playing, the more traditional musical cues for when it was the human race, but when the Navi are on screen, Cameron wanted a brand new sound, a sound that was either never heard before, or a sound that was hardly heard. For this, James Horner worked with Wanda Bryant to create a music culture for the alien race. Horner went to extreme measures to create the original score. To achieve the sound he wanted, instruments were invented from scratch. In an interview with the LA Times, James Horner is quoted as, There were a lot of vocal sounds I took from various places. These were odd vocal sounds that I would manipulate digitally, and they were interesting flutes, for instance, from South America and Finland, that I wanted to be more abstract. I also have instruments invented from scratch. They programmed, they were a lot of instruments that sounds like flutes or different sorts, but they were combined with gamelan sounding instruments. It's a very pretty fusion of different worlds that give the place itself a quality that is also magical. Using it for percussion, rather than drums or, e or other things, gives a sort of magical glow to everything. And as I said, there were a lot of instruments that I invented and worked on with my programs. I was very particular. James Horner is also on record saying Avatar was the most difficult and the biggest film he had ever worked on. 4. Gollum made Cameron make the movie. In 2001, the world got the first look of Gollum in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, to which at that time, a fully CGI character was groundbreaking and broke the mould for what could now be achieved in film. Gollum went on to be one of those phenomenal landmark moments in movie history, which the last time this happened was nearly a decade before, when Jurassic Park was released and everybody saw photorealistic dinosaurs. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, James Cameron has claimed, Looking at what Peter Jackson was able to do with Gollum, and then King Kong, Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean, all these examples of compelling, photorealistic, fully CG characters in a photorealistic world. I don't think many people are aware that a lot of the jungle scenes in King Kong were actually CG. They did a lot with miniatures, but towards the end they were doing a lot of the jungles in CG. Seeing Gollum and the other characters are what convinced him that Avatar, the version that was stewing in a pot in his brain, was now able to be told. Apart from the visually stunning characters and settings, CGI was also used for a lot of little details that people may find ridiculous. For example, Sigourney Weaver's character, Dr. Grace Augustine, is hardly seen without a cigarette. However, the cigarette wasn't even real. 
Behind-the-scenes footage shows Weaver puffing on nothing but air. 3. Dances with Wolves in Space Avatar has taken a lot of heat over the last 13 years from every corner of the internet. Critics and audiences alike have cited many similar themes and moments in Avatar from other famous movies. Ty Burr of the Boston Globe called it the same movie as Dances with Wolves, while other critics called it another white saviour movie, in which native people is impotent without the leadership of a member of the invading white culture. Dances with Wolves had the same issue when it was released, the majority of criticism claiming it to be another white saviour movie. However, Dances with Wolves would go on to win several Oscars, including two for Kevin Cosner. Other critical thinking on the movie is that James Cameron has ripped off the story of Pocahontas and also novels which centre around characters controlling bodies with their minds on distant planets. This concept was used in Paul Anderson's 1957 novella, Call Me Joe, where a paralysed man uses his mind to control an artificial body on Jupiter. It got so far that artist Roger Dean took James Cameron and Fox to court and tried to sue them for $50 million, claiming that 14 of his images gave inspiration to Pandora, the homeworld of the Navi. However, the judge threw the case out, citing, the plaintiff does not have a monopoly on floating islands. 2. The Navi James Cameron loves the colour blue, and if you watch his movies, you've probably made a comment on how much the colour shows up on screen. The Abyss, Terminator 2 and True Lies, they all have scenes bathed in blue light. So when Cameron released the first look of the alien race, people automatically were drawn to their colour. However, the colour and the cat-like look of them comes from a source that is far from the planet Pandora as you could get. The idea came from his own mother. Cameron's mother was a nurse and an artist, to which one night she had a dream where a 12-foot blue-skinned woman was with her the entire dream. Cameron said on the red carpet premiere of the movie that this image has always stayed with him and he thought it was a cool image to see on screen. Dreams are nothing new to Cameron though, as he has repeatedly said that the idea of the Terminator came to him in a nightmare while he was in Rome and he was sick. With the tall blue-skinned look being the building block for these aliens, Cameron set out to design them himself. Being an accomplished artist, Cameron drew this image of how he wanted Nateri and the rest of the Navi to look. Compared to the final design, he stuck mostly to his drawing and it's amazing to see how Cameron designs his characters. The human avatars are designed a little bit differently to the natives though, as the human avatars have five fingers instead of four, and they also have eyebrows, to which the native Navi doesn't. 1. The Biggest Movie Ever In 2009, when the movie was about to be released, Critics, websites and money makers of Fox were all saying that this movie was a risk and would be a box office disappointment. This wasn't the first time that Fox were being cautious with a movie made by James Cameron. Back in late 2006, Cameron and his producing partner, John Landau, were shopping the movie around to other studios, along with a proof of concept short, to show potential investors and how it would be. October of that year, Fox exercised their right to first refusal for anything that James Cameron did and decided to finance the movie. However, they were not taking the bulk of production costs. That came to the doorstep of Ingenuous Media, who agreed to back the film. After this had happened, a sceptical Fox employee told James Cameron and John Lando, I don't know if we're crazier for letting you do this or if you're crazier thinking you can do this. I wonder where that employee is now. When Avatar was filming, the budget was touted as being the biggest ever for a movie. Rumours were flying around saying it had a $400 million plus production budget with a marketing budget of $200 million. This was mind-blowing, as outlets were saying that it would never make its money back and it was going to be the most expensive movie flop ever. This was until a Fox employee gave an interview and said the official budget was $237 million for production and $150 million for marketing, giving a grand total of $387 million. At that time, it was a very hefty bill for a movie, and especially for Fox and Ingenuous Media. However, a few months prior to Avatar being released, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince was released and that movie's production budget was a whopping $250 million, 
with a further $155 million for marketing alone, for a grand total of $405 million. Avatar was finally released to the public in December of 2009, and it went on to become the biggest movie ever, with a huge $2.8 billion haul at the box office. It's broken numerous records, the first movie to pass $2 billion, the first movie to pass $2.5 billion and it's still making money as it's been re-released a few times over the last few years. With Avatar 2 coming out this December, Avatar is being put back into theatres in September just to refresh the movie-going minds, and it wouldn't surprise me if this movie breaks past the $3 billion mark. There we have it folks, Avatar, 8 things you may not have known about that movie. Avatar 2 is coming out later this year, I will be there first day, I am a huge fan of the first one, even though people do class it as Pocahontas and Dances with Wolves, but the thing is though, those stories is the basis of every single story. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe, hit that notification bell for future updates, and I'll see each and every one of you soon.